Hey, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. This is our first video in a five part series on building a twin tip kiteboard. Over the summer, we built this kiteboard. We took it out and rode it and have had a ton of fun on it. And we wanna show you how we did that. So in this first part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna machine our wood core. We're gonna machine first, while it's a block, the grooves for our urethane rails and our urethane fin inserts. And then the second thing that we're gonna do is pour the urethane and after that is cured, we're gonna mill the final shape of the blank. So enjoy. All right, so we have our poplar wood blank. We've milled both sides flat and parallel to each other. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna route a groove that doesn't quite go all the way through the board so that we can cast a urethane plastic into it. We've also routed out some pockets for where the fin bolts are gonna go through the board and mount the fins to it. What we're gonna do in those pockets and in that groove is we're gonna cast a urethane rubber that's about the hardness of a hard hat. So it's a pretty hard rubber. But what that does is it gives us a seamless edge around the perimeter of the board that will be tough to impacts and also waterproof and seal up the wood core so no water damage happens uh, from water intrusion. And same idea in the fin bolt pockets that once we've cast that, we'll drill through it in the center and the fin bolt will go through that and not ever come in contact with the wood. If we hit something with the fin or you know it gets torqued for some reason, the bolt will end up just hitting into that plastic and no harm, no foul, it's protected. So what we're doing now, we've got it off the CNC machine. We've leveled it up on the table so that when we pour the urethane in there, it won't be too high on one side and too low on the other. Uh, we also had some areas where we got really close to coming through the, the poplar wood core. So we've taped those up with some masking tape and now we're mixing the, the urethane rubber together. So the urethane system we're using is a system from Smooth On. It worked pretty good. Uh, but it wasn't perfect. We had some bubbling issues and after talking to a chemist, turns out urethanes are pretty moisture sensitive and that will cause them to form bubbles. So what we might do on the next board is we actually have some toughened epoxy, a toughened epoxy system from ProSet that we might try on that one instead of using the urethane. But we're gonna cast that urethane in here. A couple of things about the urethane, it is nice, low viscosity, so that makes it easier to get leveled out and poured in there. Um, an easy to mix ratio, you know, one part A, one part B kind of thing. Uh, mix it up really well. We added some pigment to it, you know, fluorescent pigment, because I was trying to go for a bright color. It does look really good when the light it's backlit, so it is translucent. It's not 100% solid. So I'm going to get that poured in there, and then I'm going to come around with a tongue stick, and all that urethane that's on top of the board, we're just going to work that back into the groove. The blank's about four tenths of an inch thick, you know, a little over three eighths and the final thickness of the board is going to be about 3 8 and the edge thickness is going to be about an eighth of an inch or, or three millimeters so we don't really need to fill the groove all the way up <clears throat> i do want to have a little extra in there in case you know it'd be a real bummer to get that on the machine and mill it and find out i didn't have enough uh, so you do want to get it you know pretty full but it doesn't have to be completely full all the way to the brim so once the urethane rubber hardens up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it over to the machine, we're gonna flip it upside down and we're gonna mill the bottom off first. When we do that, uh, we're gonna just take, you know, half a millimeter at a time off, maybe a millimeter at most, because what we're trying to do is just get deep enough down in that wood that we expose the urethane on the backside. As you can see there, we did have some leakage despite having taped off one of the areas that we knew was thin and then there was I guess a little crack in the wood uh, where some urethane got through and glued that uh, cardboard to it. So be aware you may have some leakage. So there we go at this point we've now uh, we're getting through the wood deep enough that we're exposing that edge all the way around and exposing our fin pockets. Once we've got that exposed and we're happy with it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut in pockets in the holes for our binding inserts and for our handle inserts. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use some stainless steel T-nuts. So we're cutting a recess for the, the bottom of that T-nut and then we're cutting a hole uh, through it for the T-nut to fit into. We did double check some things to make sure that we were just a little bit bigger than the T-nut on, on the hole that goes through it. And we could have cut the pockets a little deeper. The, the T-nuts 
kind of poked up a little bit on the final board, but the board still works great. I'm just going over it real quick with the sander, knocking off any fuzz uh, from the poplar. That is one of the downsides. The poplar does tend to fuzz a little bit more than other woods. Uh, the poplar is also a bit on the heavy side, so there's some other wood species like polonia that's a little bit lighter and, and may actually be a better wood to go with if you want a lighter weight board. Here we are uh, milling the deck. Um, so on the deck we do have some contours and we want really light contours or, or gradual contours because we're going to use that fiberglass skins that have been pre-laminated and glue them to the deck. So if we had hard steps or hard contours we'd probably end up with some buckling because of that. So we went really gradual with it. But this blank is looking great. Uh, we're going to leave it rectangular to lay up and then we're going to trim off the excess. After that you'll see that in, in some of the videos coming up. I think video 5 actually is the one you're going to see that in. So you see there as we're doing the final mill across the deck uh, those pockets are starting to show up. Blank looks great, so we will move on to the next step. All right, now that we have our blank ready to go, in the next video, we'll show building the rocker table. The rocker table is simply a jig that we're gonna use to give this some rocker when we clamp it all together. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you're enjoying this channel and you wanna see more of these, which we got four more of these coming, hit the subscribe button. Thanks.